About three weeks ago, I started hearing clicking coming from my Ender 3 Neo. And when I looked online, I found an article that said that the print head is probably hitting the layers below it, which is causing that clicking sound. I didn't really think much of it. And then about two weeks later, I started getting huge gaps in my prints in between the layers. I tried to replace the nozzle as well as a few other things, but unfortunately it didn't work. Found out that it could be a problem with my extruder. So I went and looked in the back of my extruder and I found the extruder gear was slipping. You can see here, there's a big groove in the extruder gear, which is causing it to not be able to get a good grip on the filament. Instead of just buying a new gear for the extruder, I decided to give this a shot. This is the Creality Sprite direct drive extruder. All right, here we are up close and personal. Now let's take a look at inside of the box. We've got the user manual. There's a little piece of tubing that will run from the extruder into your hot end. A little bundle of cable ties so we can retie the cables when we're finished. Now here is the bracket that hooks to the back of the hot end. Uh, there is another kit that comes with the hot end attached as well. It costs about $60 more than this one, but this one you will use your stock hot end. Here's some cables run to the stepper motor. In this bag, we've got some spacers and some tiny little washers and bolts. And then finally, here's the extruder. Top of the extruder, we have this little lever here so we can release the filament. Filament will go in here. This too will actually run out of here and then into your hot end. Pretty light, so we shouldn't have any problems with adding any extra weight on top of the current hot end. Uh, yeah, so that's it up close. Now let's go ahead and install it onto the printer. All right, I went ahead and moved the printer over here. We're gonna start off by removing this bolt that's gonna be right here. Mine's already out, but you're just gonna need to use one of your Allen keys. All right, once you've got this bolt out right here, we're gonna take off the heat cover. There's gonna be two little brackets on each side. You're gonna have to unhook each of these brackets and then you should be able to just lift this heat cover right off the hot end. Just be super careful not to break those tabs when you're pulling that off. Pick this up here and set it to the side. Now what we're gonna need to do is grab one of the Allen keys that came with our printer and we're gonna stick it in this bolt that's in the front of here. So runs all the way through the printer and through the hot end. And then we're just gonna stick this Allen key in the front here. Uh, once we have that Allen key in there, you can use the wrench that came with your printer. Just hold the Allen key still and then turn the wrench to unbolt this bolt here. All right, once we start getting to the end here, I'm just gonna hold on to the hot end to make sure that doesn't fall off and just kind of twist this nut off by hand here. Cut that nut off. And then we're going to pull out. All right, and then we're gonna grab our new bracket. Looks like in the picture, the bracket faces to, if you're looking at the front of the printer, this little nub on the bracket faces to the right. I'm just gonna slide that on there. Gonna put on our new rollers. Finally, we're gonna tighten this back up, same way that we loosened it. Probably easiest if we tighten it, just grab a hold of it with the wrench and then spin the Allen wrench side. All right, now that we have this bracket on, we're gonna go ahead and pull out the old Bowden tube. For me, it's this big white one here. Yours probably looks very similar. There's a little blue tab on the front here that you pull out. All right, there's gonna be a bunch of cable ties that you wanna cut here that hold this old Bowden tube in place. Just cut off all of these cable ties. And then we're going to pull out this bracket here. I'm not sure if you can see it right here. This is other blue bracket. And then we're going to pull out the Bowden tube from both sides. Make sure you push down on this tab and pull it straight out just like that. All right, next up, we're going to take the little blue Bowden tube that they gave us. We're going to stick this 
into the extruder, push it all the way down until it hits the hot end, stop moving. You won't be able to push it down any further. And then take one of your blue clips that we had before, and we're just going to clip this right in here to hold it in place. Just like that. Then we're going to take our new extruder, and we're going to put this on the bracket. All right, you may need to cut off a small section of your Bowden tube. Mine was actually too long. I couldn't fit the extruder on, so I cut off about an inch. Now I'm just going to slide this on. Should fit fine. And yep, that fits perfectly. So that will sit right on there. And then we're going to take the little bolts that we got. And we're going to bolt those in here from the front. Don't forget to put on that tiny washer when you bolt these in. You should just bolt straight in from the front. I'm going to do it about finger tight. I'm going to do the other side and then I'll torque both of them down. All right. Once you get both of these down, you can take that little piece of remaining tubing and you can stick that in here if you'd like. Kind of direct your tubing coming from your filament spool. All right, next up, we're going to unplug the clip from the side of the old extruder. This white clip here. We're going to put on the wiring harness that they gave us. Snap that in there, make sure the grooves line up. And then we're going to snap the wiring harness onto the new extruder. Okay, now that we've got that wiring harness plugged in, we can go ahead and remove the old extruder. First thing we're going to do is we're going to unscrew this bolt that's back here that's holding this tension spring in. Just be careful because there will be tension on this spring after you unscrew it. From here, we can go ahead and pull this roller out. Looks like it needs a little bit bigger of an Allen wrench. Now we can go ahead and remove this lever here. Pull out this spring. Once this lever is off, then we have access to these bolts here. There's one here, there's one on the outside here, and then there's one on the outside here. We don't need to do anything with these two bolts, so just leave those alone. It's going to take out this one here, this one here, and then this one back here. Once we start to get this one loose, you'll start to feel the extruder motor becoming loose. Just hang on to the bottom of it so it doesn't fall. And then there it is. It's out. Now we can just take off this bracket. I'm going to leave this bracket on so we can use this to zip tie our other wiring harness to. I'm going to route this the same way that this comes out of the bracket here. Probably the cleanest way to do it. Just going to throw a zip tie right here. All right, my hands are constantly in the way in this. And then I'm going to throw a zip tie right here. And then finally, I'm going to throw another zip tie here. If you're done with that, you can just snip off the little tails here on the zip ties. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this fan shroud back on, same way that we took it off. It just slides on here. And then it should just snap right in, just like that. Okay, and last time, I'm going to reverse the direction that this filament spool holder is facing. I want it to face the other way. That way, it feeds the filament straight down into the extruder. You may not know this, but there's actually a little thing on the back here that you can turn. And this will just come straight off. You don't actually have to flip this bracket around. We can just stick this in here. And then screw that on like that. Now it's reversed. Put the filament spool on, make sure that it's not doing anything funny. Yep, I think that should be fine. And then that feeds straight down into the new extruder. This will end off here. Just like that. Perfect. I'm going to move the printer back to its normal location, and then we're going to go ahead and look at the E-step configuration. All we're going to do is we're going to go into 
control and then we're going to go into motion we're going to go to steps per millimeter and we're going to set our steps per millimeter to 424.9 and then we're going to hit save configuration all right and just like that you have your e-steps set to 424.9 you're going to want to fine tune your e-steps so i'm going to link a video down in the description to somebody who goes over in detail how to fine tune your e-steps this is my first video on the new channel. I'm going to make this channel all about doing reviews on things. I'm going to actually focus on doing one star reviews on Amazon products and one star reviews on restaurants. If that's something you're interested in, please subscribe to the channel. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave me a thumbs up. It really helps the algorithm. Thank you everybody for watching and we will see you in the next video.